I'm a local, you know, local resident, uh, effectively within a quarter of a mile of this place, and uh, it's become part of um, my uh, everyday existence. Really, I, it's, it's, it's like a favourite, favourite place, and I think it is. That's the case for a lot of people in Oxford that walk down the canal. It brings a smile to your face when you walk down the canal. Just a bit of character um, amidst all this massive new luxury gated development that's going on all, all around us. Okay, could you introduce yourself? Okay, um, I'm Jenny and I'm from Manchester and I'm visiting how, how Oxford for the first time. Have you ever been down here? First impression is it's very friendly and uh, yeah, it seems like a lovely place. Looking forward to finding out more about it. <laughs> okay, my name's uh, Darren. Um, I've been in the boatyard about five years now, uh, renting workshops. I've actually managed to build a boat here. It's taken three years um, so far. It's nearly finished. Um, the boatyard's a fantastic resource for for boaters to repair and um, and build boats. Actually, you know, it's we have cranings once a month, so it's it's a busy a busy place really. Uh, my name is John, I share a workshop with Darren here and I make stuff um, and I would like to see the boatyard continue to exist for many reasons but not least of which is that it's the last service station before you get to the river when you come down the canal. It's an essential resource for boaters on the Oxford Canal and on the Thames. The mic needs to go up, needs to go tighter in on, on the framing, doesn't it? But not least of which is that it's the last service station before you get to the river when you come down the canal. It's essential. I'll start here. I mean, this is my own vessel that I've, I've actually had built here by um, Alchemy Boats. It's taken three years so far to, to build. Um, it's virtually ready to set sail now. Um, one point I would like to make is that we're surrounded by new developments up and down the canal and um, there's, there's no real kind of social housing um, in any of these developments or certainly not enough so there's no affordable housing. Um, this was one way that I could afford to, to create a home for myself um, and my partner. Um, it was an affordable option and uh, it's kind of our way of creating a form of social housing if you like which is something I'm not sure if the council really understand. I don't think they, they kind of get that bit really that, that we're creating homes for ourselves here and actually relieving the kind of pressure um, on, on these new developments and stuff you know. We're building our own homes, basically. Should we, should we move along? I mean, as you can see, it's quite a rough-looking place. There hasn't been any investment gone into this place for, for a long time, really, based on the fact that we've always got a very short lease. Never really know what's what's going to happen next, never really know where we stand. So there's no point in putting, putting too much time or money into, into it really. Um, apart from anything, it belongs to British Waterway, so um, I suspect they're responsible really. If we need new roofs and whatnot, they ought to, uh, they ought to sort that out and then we might pay a bit more rent. <laughs> um, so we head over to the forge? start at the forge. Can we go in? Will the camera should be okay? Pick it up in here. Well I share this workshop with, with John who's actually filming at the moment. Um, just to excuse the mess, it's usually worse than this. <laughs> uh, you can see the, re see the remains of the old forge, um, if John kind of comes round. Um, 
there's an old kind of chimney breast. You can't really see them, but you've got the old quenching bust here. Um, and I don't know if John can actually zoom in, but there's even the old um, the old irons here where they'd blow the air into the forge. So it's in our way, really. We, we, we could do with ripping it out, but really what would be nice would be to kind of restore it and actually have a blacksmith work in this space, which is what it was originally used for. Um, John and I do more kind of carpentry work, really, so maybe this workshop doesn't suit us, but it's been a great resource for both of us, in fact, to work on our boats and, um, and work on other people's boats, you know. It's a, it's, it's a useful space for us, even though it's freezing and there's some holes in the roof. <laughs> We think of them as ventilation, really. <laughs> well, just uh, below Isis Lock, you've got uh, the, the, the river, uh, the flow of the river, and the river is a very, very different place to be on than the canal. If you sink on the canal, uh, at worst, you can stand on the roof of your boat while it sits on the mud at the bottom. Uh, if you have a problem on the river, it's far more serious. If your engine stops working, uh, you don't have any brakes and you can just be carried straight into the weir because you don't have any steering either. Uh, this is in effect the last service station before the motorway. Uh, navigating the Thames is a, a far more serious issue than navigating the inland canal waterways and a boatyard here for the fettling of boats and rendering them fit for the river is in my view absolutely essential. Hello. Hello. From alchemy boats point of view, um, it would be good to have some sort of dry cover mm. so that uh, work can be done on boats in all weather conditions and especially when building boats, you've got to be in the dry really. If you don't have a cabin on the boat, the boat fills up with water, you know, so um, we, need to, we need to be in the dry. We've got a, a dry dock um, at the other end of the yard, which hasn't been used for, for as long as I can remember, really. I think I've seen it used once. Um, and also that would need a roof over it, really, for it to, to work properly. Um, what about the forge and, and, and the workshops? as well, would they be a, a sort of integral part? Do you see those as being an integral part of the, of the future boatyard? Oh, absolutely. Why, uh, why, why are they important? Because it's light industry. and It's a place where people can do anything from cabinet making to pottery or whatever. And I think workshop facilities are necessary. Mm. And I might be biased because I make things, but uh, I think it's formed very much part of the uh, future picture of the boatyard. Are, are there no other sort of sites around this area? Not in but North Oxford. In fact, um, only recently there was a, an industrial estate on um, Aristotle Lane, um, which has since been developed. Um, and actually, yeah, I, I remember when that existed, and I used to go there and try and look for work when I started off in carpentry. There were various carpenters and joiners down there. So, you know, that that would have been somewhere I, w I would have chose to maybe set up a business but that's been taken away from us. Um, I'm under the impression the paper mill in Wolvercote, that would have been an ideal spot for light industry. That's been taken away, that's being developed. There's nowhere left, this is like the last stand really. We really are the last of the Mohicans kind of thing, you yeah, know, yeah. <laughs> in, in North Oxford and if they get rid of this place they, they're just going to get rid of any last bit of kind of culture that Jericho has and it's traditionally been a, a zone where artisans, musicians have hung out, you know, somewhere where they can express themselves and actually, you know, it, it, that's on its last legs really. This is the last, the last chance to keep a little bit of, a bit of culture, you know. Yeah.